The following presentation is a production of Ride the Wave Media. Step into the world of A is for Adversity, a podcast where we explore the journey of motherhood. Join us weekly as we navigate the intricate garden of self-discovery amidst the trials of motherhood. This is your space to nurture your identity and bloom. I'm your host, Jen Banks. Hey there, welcome to the podcast this week. I am re-airing an episode from a few years ago because, as you may have experienced, it is may <laughs> Or in other words, the crazy time of the year when it's the end of the school year and there are all these concerts and activities and needs and in my family birthdays. So <laughs> we just are staying busy over here. And I am also editing my book, which is a lot harder than the five days it took to write the book. So I am in the thick of it and I am offering this episode as a replay that you may have not heard before. In this episode, I started out by talking to my oldest son, Rowan, and at the time he was three or he had just turned four. So he was just barely four. And in this time, I decided to interview him again. And so he just turned six. And it's been so neat to compare the differences. I didn't realize it would be a time capsule of sorts, but that is one of the benefits of podcasting. So there was a little bit of history embedded with Rowan, and I'm excited to have you hear from him again. My two younger boys are also old enough to <laughs> somewhat talk on the podcast, so I had them share some of their thoughts as well. So it's neat to hear the little guys every so often, and I am in the thick of mothering, but I still continue my podcasting hobby. So thank you for being along with me on the ride and enjoy this episode. Hi, Rowan. How are you today? Good. It's good to have you on my podcast again. How old are you now? Six. Yeah, when was your birthday? May 27th. Which was? Last, last time. Yeah, last night, huh? Yesterday. Yeah. And you just finished what grade? Um, I almost finished kindergarten. And wait, Mom, look. Oh. <gasps> Oh my goodness, you lost another tooth. Yeah, it's in a box that's like this big in my backpack. Oh my gosh, so you lost your first tooth at school about two weeks ago, and now you lost your second tooth at school? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, man. One of these days I'll get to watch you lose a tooth, but so far they've all happened at school. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, the last time I had you on here, I asked about your favorite toy, so it'll be interesting to hear how it's changed. What's your favorite toy right now? Chip your thank you. Ooh, and what does that do? It starts with like it you deliver it as a cube mm -hmm. and then you can like shape shift it into stuff. That is so cool. That's awesome. <clears throat> so I know that you like a lot of toys that transform. So pretty much anything that changes you love, huh? And I'm also strong. You are super strong. What's on your shirt today? Audio. Oh, yeah, and you've been liking to play Super Mario Bros. Wonder, huh? Mm-hmm. Is there anything else you like to play with right now? Yeah, my dinosaur transform. Yep, transformers all the way, huh? And what else did you get for your birthday that came in the mail today? Roller blades. Yeah, and we just have to wait for the knee pads before you can try them, huh? Yeah, and the elbow pads. Yep, so true. Okay, well, one thing that we've been doing lately is every day we say, what was the best part of your day? So what was the best part of your day today? Came back. Yeah, so what happened was we ordered his presents from Amazon yesterday because we let him pick them out and then they came today. So that was super fast. I was telling him that we didn't really have Amazon when I was growing up or if we did, it was different. Oh, it's so. Nice. And then what was the hardest part of your day today? When Prim was just so jealous about my rollerblades. Yeah, that was a really hard part. He was upset that it wasn't his birthday because he wanted some too, huh? He's older. Maybe. Have you felt that way before, that you're jealous that someone else got some presents? Mm-hmm. But now you got to be the one that got presents. Was that nice? Yeah. And I can... And we have a kid. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, thanks for being on here, Rowan. It was good to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Hi, Brian. How are you? Good. Can you tell them how old you are? 
Uh, we. Yeah. And what toys do you like to play with? Uh, Paw Patrol. Mm-hmm. What other kind of toys? Like, like microphone. Oh, you like this? This is pretty fun. It seems like you like vehicles right now. You're like, oh, let's not touch it. Why? Because it makes it too noisy. What kind of other toys do you like? You like cars? Yeah. Especially what kind of cars? Like Lightning McQueen and Mater. Lightning McQueen and Mater. And monster trucks, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite color? Mm, gray. Yeah, it's a good one. And what do you like about bedtime routines? I doing talk time. Doing talk time. And sometimes you like to stay up later and play a little bit longer, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you say just a little bit. Huh? What else do you want to tell our friends? What's your favorite kind of food? Slurpy noodles. Slurpy noodles. Ooh, and chicken nuggets. Yes. Um, well. Okay, one last question and then I'll let you go. What's your favorite thing to drink? Blue juice. Blue juice, which is Gatorade, huh? Okay, thank you, Brant. Yes. Yeah, what are these? Yes. Yeah, you like M&M's, huh? M&M's. Yeah. What other things do you like to eat? M&M's. Do you like Fruit Loops? Emerson, can you say hi? Hi. Can you say, how old are you? Can you say two? Can you say two? No, you're just going to eat your treat that I had to use to bribe you to come on here. Can you say hi? E. Okay. Say bye. Can you say bye? Bye. We'll see you guys there. Hey, I'm Jen. In life, I've learned that adversity is a stranger to no one. The way we cope is a huge indicator of our character. We want to make choices from confidence, empowerment, and trust instead of letting our circumstances control us. Let's talk about how. This is episode R, Recognizing Adjustments with Cameron Smith. Hello, this is my first episode that will be published post-baby. So we now have a family of five. I have three boys and we're just doing our best adjusting to that. I have two very important and special guests for you today. The first is my son Rowan. I figured it would be a good time to have him on the podcast again because this is episode R and his name begins with R. He will do our segments for us. I don't explicitly say them, but we talk about his favorite toys. That's his list. And then we talk about emotions a little bit. After you hear from Rowan, I'm excited to announce my guest for this week. It is Cameron Smith, co-founder and president of Kodiak Cakes. We have a fabulous conversation and I'm excited to share it with you. So we'll just go right into it as this episode is already pretty lengthy. So enjoy. Hi, Rowan. How are you today? Good. Good. Where'd you just get back home from? Preschool. Do you like preschool? Yeah. Yeah, you have some good friends there. I have a question for you. What are some of your favorite toys? Um, airplanes. Oh, those are good. Yep, airplanes. What else? What else do you like? Um, cars. Mm-hmm. And? Fish. Fish. That's fun. I was going to say, it sounds like you like vehicles and things that move. Well, I guess fish kind of move too, but you can't ride in a fish. <laughs> uh, any other toys that you like? What do you like to play with when we're at home? Um, these kind of balls. Balls, yeah. Those are fun to throw and kick and roll. Good. And balance. Yes, that's true. Uh, how are you feeling today? Sick. Oh, you feel a little sick? Yeah. Is your throat a little scratchy? Yeah. How do you feel when you're sick? My voice sounds scratchy. 
Mm. And maybe you don't have a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah. Does it make you more happy when you're not sick? Yeah. Remember, you got to say the words. You can't just nod your head or else they won't hear you. (laughs) So right now you're feeling sick in your throat. Sometimes do you feel sick other places? Yeah, preschool. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean like other places in your body. Have you ever felt sick in your tummy? Or sick in your head? Or sometimes your legs hurt? My legs do hurt. Yeah. So you're getting a new baby brother this week. How does that make you feel? Happy. Why does it make you happy? Mm. Look what face I'm doing. Yeah, it's a happy face. Why does it make you happy to have a new brother? Because it's going to come in your, your tummy. Yeah, so you're excited that mommy won't have a baby in her tummy anymore? Yeah. Why else does it make you excited to have a baby brother? Do you like being an older brother? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard, right? Like, Brant just turned off the computer and we had to start this again, huh? Was that a little frustrating? What happens when you feel frustrated? Um, he takes toys from me. Yeah. And how does it feel in your tummy when you feel frustrated? Happy. It makes you happy to feel frustrated? What is what does it mean to be frustrated? Um Um Is there a t- and is there not a toy in this bag? Here, we're not talking about toys right now. Can you come finish this? We're almost done. Ah. Maybe we can talk about something else. Uh, sometimes you have to be patient with other brothers, huh? Yeah. What does it mean to be patient? Uh, wait. To wait, yeah. Is it easy to wait? Ah. Yes or no? Yes. Oh, it's easy to wait. Yeah, sometimes you're really good at being patient. But sometimes it's really hard, huh? What can we do when we need to be patient and it's hard to wait? Um, I don't know. What do you do when you're waiting? Be patient. Yeah. Do you do anything to pass the time? Yeah. Like play with a toy or think about something else? Yeah, I play with my train. His name's Percy. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing to do to pass the time. Okay. Um, do you want to sing a song? No. Is there anything else you want to say into the microphone? No. Okay. Thank you for being here, Rowan. You're welcome. Hello. I am here today with Cameron Smith, the co-founder and president of Kodiak Cakes. How are you today? I'm doing great, Jen. It's good to good to chat with you. Yeah, you too. Just for my listeners, I know Cameron's youngest sister, Kaylee. She and I met in junior high, and so I I know Cameron through that. So, yeah, no, Jen, that's that, that's awesome. So Kaylee is she's you're right. She's my youngest sister, and I have six sisters. So she's she's one of uh, five other sisters that I have. So no, she that's great. Love the connection. Yeah, and no brothers. You're the only boy, right? That's that's exactly right. And I, so I have four little kids and my oldest is a boy and then I have three girls. So it's just kind of trickled down being the only boy and then my son's the only boy. So at least I know how to do it so I can help him navigate around it. And uh, my dad was the only boy too. So I think it's, it's, it's just what happens to us. We get surrounded by, surrounded by girls. So true. Yeah. I, I have two boys and then the third boy on the way. So I'm, I know the, I know the feeling. (laughs) Awesome. Well, congrats. That's exciting. Thanks. Boys are boys are fun. Yeah. So if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about yourself and uh, then I have a few questions for you. Yeah, sounds great. So I, um, I joined Kodiak in 2009. I was just finishing up my undergraduate degree from the University of Utah, just in business. I I, I didn't know where I wanted to focus in business necessarily. So I did like business administration, which focused on each function of business from finance to operations and marketing. And I, I was looking for a job, looking for something to do. I had just got done selling food storage over the summer mm. and I saw a job posting for Kodiak cakes. 
I didn't know what the business was. I Googled it. I remember looking at the website and thinking, oh man, this is, I'm not sure about this company. And I actually mm-hmm. passed up on the job a handful of times until I was finally like, all right, I need to, I guess I'll apply there. I just keep seeing that job. I guess I'll apply there. And so I sent in a, a resume to Joel and then went and met with him. And I remember after meeting with Joel and I actually met with he and his dad, his, his dad had retired from teaching and, and was, and was actually working with Joel. Hmm. I met with both of them and I remember walking out of the office and it was a really rundown office <laughs> right by the city mission. But I remember calling my wife after we had just been, we had just got married a year earlier. I remember calling her after thinking, Hey, this would be pretty cool. I would be a really cool company. And not because it was a huge company or growing. I mean, sales were less than a million dollars. And so for me, it was more, all right, this, this would be an opportunity to get into a company that's really small and be able to influence a lot of different areas. It would really scratch that entrepreneurial itch that, that mm-hmm. I had kind of grown up with, not necessarily because of myself, but because, you know, because I came from a bigger family, my dad was always doing odds and ends jobs to, to make a little extra money. And so for me, when I, after I met with Joel, I was like, Hey, that would actually be pretty fun because there's a lot of different opportunities and you're wearing a lot of different hats. Yeah. And then I, I started working with Joel and his dad was able to fully retire. I guess this would have been the second time retiring. Mm-hmm. And you know, the, the rest is, I guess a lot of, uh, I'd say history, but there's a lot of history there from us getting on Sharp Tank in 2014 to us launching a high protein pancake mix called Power Cakes, which is now our top item and the number one selling pancake mix at Target and a handful of other retailers to now a business where you know, we have about 115 people total and our revenue uh, is, you know, just over 300 million. So wow. there's, there's a lot of things that have happened over that, those, these last 13 years, but have, have learned a ton along the way. Yeah, that is so neat. I'll put this in the show notes, but I really enjoyed the podcast, How I Built This, where, where Joel kind of explains how Kodiak Cakes came to be. And it's fascinating to listen to. So I'll put that down. Mm-hmm. But I, I remember that he that Joel said, suddenly everyone wanted to be our friend. It just kind of took off. And so it seems like failure is seen within a small sphere, but success is widely known. So you, you mentioned that you didn't really know where this company was going, but how does it feel now that it has become so big? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. I remember when I first started working with Joel, I just had this entrepreneurial itch and I know Joel had it too. And I was actually looking past Kodiak Cakes. I wasn't looking at where we are currently at because we were kind of hitting our head against the wall and, and tried a lot of things. It wasn't totally working. Joel had a cookie store mm-hmm. at over at, at the Gateway Mall here in Salt Lake. And I, I remember we'd go over there and I'd have different ideas of things we could try and things we could do to, to get more sales there. I remember he and I had a bunch of other random business ideas of, of things we could do. And so you know, there in the beginning, I was thinking, all right, let's, get, let's dump Kodiak. It's not going anywhere. And we'll do something else. It was kind of in my mind. And you know, Joel had been doing Kodiak for a while. So I think that was a little bit harder for him to, to fully digest. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't fully see that happening. And then things just started working. We, we picked up Target. We picked up a few other retailers. We landed on Shark Tank. And, and then we picked up some more retailers. And then we brought on outside financing to help mm-hmm. grow the business through some private equity groups. And, and as it continued to grow, we started to think, wow, maybe, maybe this business actually could go somewhere. Maybe it actually could grow to the point that it is today. We didn't then have the foresight to say, hey, Kodiak is going to be this big of a brand. It's going to do this and that. And wow, this many people on the team, like we never thought that. But I think what turning point for us was when we brought on our, when we brought on our first private equity partners, they, they told us, look, I think Kodiak, I think you guys, you guys have a huge opportunity. I think this is it, mm-hmm. this big of a brand. I think you could do these type of things. And so what it did is it helped expand what we thought was possible. Mm-hmm. We almost had this limited vision just based on what we knew. And through that exposure of other people, we were able to see more than we even thought could happen with Kodiak, which then helped us to achieve more than we thought possible because someone first believed that more could be possible, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, that's really neat. And it speaks to the importance of having those outside ears and advice. And uh, it's neat to hear you talk about it too, because a lot of times I feel like we look from the outside and wow, it just happened. But like mm-hmm. you mentioned, it was little things along the way and looking back it, it all came together. So that's a good perspective to have. So Joel said, and you mentioned just barely too, that you were hired in 2009. And he said that you were a lot like him when he got back from his mission, enthusiastic and confident, fearless with blinders on. You didn't see the obstacles or you didn't care. So why do you think we are more empowered to try new things when we're younger? Oh, that's, that's such a good question. You know, it's something that I, that I, that I thought about recently. I have, like, like I mentioned, I have four little kids. They're my oldest daughter. She's eight. And, you know, as, as I think about, you know, why, why it's okay to fail when we're younger. And I think that's because we see failure at that time as learning and adjusting and not limiting on what we can do. Mm. So like I mentioned with my, with my eight-year-old daughter, she loves to do flips, hang from bars. She, she constantly says that she's either a professional gymnastics girl or that she's going to be gymnastics and it's almost it's it's a it's it's not even like a question if that's going to happen for her she is so adamant that that's going to happen as a result of that she's like she'll try a flip she'll try a cartwheel she'll try these different things she'll fall and she'll hurt herself countless times but because she's so passionate about gymnastics every time she falls she gets back up she adjusts she learns, then she applies that learning to get better. And so I think what happens is when we're younger, we have in our minds of who we want to be and we drive towards that. We don't limit it. And, and what's unfortunate is, is sometimes what happens, and you see this in other people, is that they start to limit themselves based on what other people think they can do or based on what other people believe they should be able to do. Hmm. And so it, it starts to crush a dream that you have. And I mean, imagine if I told my daughter, hey, you're never going to be a uh, professional gymnastics person. You're too tall or you, uh, it's not in our genes or, 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 or any of that type of stuff. One of two things will happen to her, right? Or she'll go one of two directions. One direction will be she'll go harder into gymnastics because she's just that passionate about it and doesn't care what anyone says or thinks. Now, I'll be honest, that's my hope for my kids. And that's, that's my hope for most everyone is that they, they are so passionate about what they believe they can accomplish that they don't limit themselves. So she either goes that direction or she goes the direction of, she stops doing what she loves. She stops dreaming and she settles on something else that people say she should do. And so all this to say is we have to know what our dreams are and we have to go out and achieve our dreams on our dreams. And like when I, when I joined Kodiak, I didn't know what was and wasn't possible. Just like my eight-year-old daughter, she doesn't know what is and what isn't possible. And so in her mind, she has this dream of I'm going to do this and I'm going to become this. And the best thing I can do for her is to say, yeah, you can go for it. And the best thing that Joel did for me is he said, cool. Yeah. Let's, let's try it. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do this. And so I didn't feel limited by what he saw as what was possible and what wasn't because he didn't project that onto me. So I was able to believe in what I thought was possible. And and as a result, I, I, for myself, I said, you know, if other people figured this out, I'm sure we can figure it out too. And so knowing that we might not know where things could go, I figured if other people can, we can too. And I didn't, I tried my best not to limit myself. And so I think that's the biggest thing is if we just don't, in some ways we, we call it blinders we can also call it limiters. Are we limiting ourselves or are we really letting ourselves be the best version of what we want to be, not what others want us to be? Yeah, that's really good. I love that comparison because it's true. We're, we're tainted by knowledge or things cloud our vision as we as we find out more or as we get older. So mm-hmm. I love that idea of just removing that and staying focused on what we really want. That's great. Mm -hmm. I love that. So how do you balance work and family? I know a lot of people I'm sure are vying for your attention or, you know, the company and, and things like that. How do you feel like you balance that? It is, 
it's, it's something that I, something that I think about, you know, I, I'm fortunate and that I married the perfect person for me. You know, the, That's good. The, the, the only title that my wife cares about for me is dad. Mm. Um, and not, <laughs> not to sound weird, like dad for like our, for our kids. Yes. Like, she, she's incredibly supportive and in, in all my goals and, and aspirations for me personally and professionally and, and, and whatnot. She cares so much about the development of our children and both her and I love to learn and develop ourselves. And as such, we care about our children learning and we care about them developing and we care about them being approachable, authentic people. And if we're not staying close to them, then we're relying on others to teach them and mm-hmm. others to raise them. And sometimes those others are TV. Sometimes those others are school teachers. Sometimes those others are peers. And that's not to say that all those others are negative or bad, or they're all positive. They're a little bit of everything. And so for us, my wife and I care so much about who our kids turn out to be and the memories that we're making with them. Mm-hmm. So it causes me to want to have that much more of a work-life balance and make sure that I'm present, make sure that I'm aware of what's going on in their lives. What's, what's making them happy right now? What's making them sad and why and and staying close to it. And at the end of the day, my kids don't care that I am a co-founder at Kodiak. They don't even know what that means. They they don't care that I'm a president. I mean, they, they don't know what that means. All they care is, Hey, dad's here and he's jumping on the tramp with us. Hey, dad's here and he's throwing the football with me. Hey, dad's here and he's watching me do my flips and my my tricks or or whatever. And so it's more just, I think sometimes we lose sight of which title is most, most important in our life. Hmm. I think sometimes the titles that we feel are most important become CEO, president, director, VP, or anything because that helps define who we are externally. I think the title of dad, husband, son, brother are probably more meaningful and life-changing than uh, potentially some of these others can be at times. Yeah, that's so great. I love that. I can tell you have your priorities spelled out and I love that you're sticking to them. That is, that is really cool. Sometimes, you know, it's, I, you know, it's, we, yeah, we always we aspire. To, we always, yes, we always have, we always have to adjust. We always have to course correct when we take a step back and realize, oh shoot, my priorities aren't in line with where I want to be. Okay. I need to, I need to, I need to adjust back. So yeah, yes. there's always that, there's always that adjustment. Yes. Thank you for reminding us because we are human. It's so true, but I love that little reminder and the plug to, to think about our titles. That's really good. So what advice do you have to budding entrepreneurs or someone who is in a business type of situation? You know, this, this is something I think, think about a lot. And I think about what would I want someone to tell me and it's similar to, to what I shared earlier. You can tell when someone believes in you. And you can tell when they think that you're going to do something great and you can do whatever you want to do. And so the biggest thing that I'd say for an entrepreneur is first, you have to believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. If you believe that you can do it, then most often you're going to accomplish more than you thought was possible because you first believed in yourself. And the second thing is when times get hard to keep pushing forward, you know, just like my daughter in learning gymnastics, I, I listened to this uh, YouTube on, he was talking almost about like gamifying life and just about how, when you fail, when you're playing Mario, you don't toss the controller and say, I'm never going to play this again. Mm -hmm but you pick the controller back up and say, okay, now I know that there's a pit right there. And, and so you adjust the way you play because now you've taken that as learning. And so I I love that because I love the thought about thinking about life as, am I approaching life? Like I would Mario, did I approach that setback or that disappointment or that challenging time as a learning time that now I'm going to adjust and pivot and avoid that pit this next time around or is it damaging us and we toss the controller of life and say nothing ever works for me and so i think for entrepreneurs i'd say like you're going to get hit with stuff on the left and the right you're going to hit a lot of pits you're going to hit a lot of turtle shells and and those goombas will, will will come up pretty quick and so it's all about 
Are you learning in those moments? Are they happening for you or are they happening to you? Mm, that's so good. Yeah, I love that word that you've used throughout this interview, adjust, because I feel like that's a much healthier way to look at setbacks or failure, you know, instead of just throwing in the towel, we just adjust and we, we learn and move forward. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then my last question for you is what's one of your favorite inspirational quotes? You know, there's, I'm, (laughs) I'm the type of person that I love self-help books. I love like quotes. And so, you know, trying to nail it down to one, I'm like, Oh man, that's so hard. Cause there's a couple it's with, so with that with that said i i i most recently read um the book personality is impermanent and it's 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 become one of my most favorite books hmm. and in there he said and this and this has become like a quote that i just love be authentic to your future self and who you want to be and what hmm. i love about that is oftentimes people say hey be authentic to who you are don't try and be someone that you're not or anything around that. And, and this quote is talking about who do you want to become? Who do you aspire to be? Be authentic to that person. What does that person care about? What does that person think? What does success look like for that person? And if you focus on that, and what will happen is at the end of the day, you'll start to become that person because you're being authentic, not to who people said you were, or not to who you thought you should be, You'll be authentic to who you wanted to be. And I think if more of us became authentic to who we wanted to be, I think we'd see incredible things happen in the world. Wow. Yeah, that's good. That's forward motion thinking. I like that because it's true. You you become who you practice to be or, you know, who you are working to be. So that's, that's really good. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. Yeah. And I can totally relate to you as well with the favorite quotes. I recently shared mine on an episode of my podcast and I left number one blank and I shared my top five favorite quotes, but I couldn't commit to like my top one. So I just shared the Uh rest. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Do you have any like last words or anything else that people can do to support you guys or? (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, it's, love, love that people actually know what Kodiak is now. There were years ago when people had no idea what, what Kodiak was. And I have, you know, I have some good stories around that that are definitely top of mind. But yeah, I mean, reach out with me on, on LinkedIn. I love connecting with people. And then, um, yeah, if, if you see Kodiak, hope that you you pick up product. We, we I still love hearing from people that say they love Kodiak. And even as you said, Jen, like, oh yeah, we love it you know, all the time. I'm like, oh, Sweet. Okay. People still like it. Kate. We're still doing good. <laughs> right. It's so crazy. We all still need that reassurance once in a while. Perfect. Well, have a That's good rest exactly of your right. day and thanks again. Yep. Thanks, Jen. Appreciate it. Thank you as always to Blaine from Ride the Wave Media for the production of this podcast. If you are interested in starting your own podcast, reach out to me or him and we will get you set up. Check out all the other podcasts on the network and I will talk to you next week. Mm-hmm.